Welcome to the Level Up Podcast, presented by The Ultimate Gamer, a show that features conversations with trailblazers, thought leaders, risk takers, decision makers, celebrities, athletes, and investors who are defining the gaming and esports space. On Level Up, we take a journey into this dynamic industry and start to decode and reveal who and what's making news. It's about connecting and it's about sharing the stories and vision of the people who make gaming and esports a global phenomenon. And now, please welcome your host, student of the game and connector to the esports community, Tommy Knapp. What's up, everyone? I'm Tommy Knapp, and this is an all-new episode of the Level Up Podcast presented by The Ultimate Gamer. On today's show, I have a conversation with Wendy Lacotte, Head of Strategic Alliances and Digital Marketing Innovation at HyperX. She says she is better at watching video games than she is at playing them, but still considers herself a gamer. I love this. She also says her superpowers are serious energy, resourcefulness, creativity, agility, and that she is always ready with a plan B. She has held leadership roles that provide mentoring sessions on working with brands in the hashtag esports industry, women in esports, and activations in the marketplace, and is often a speaker at gaming conferences and marketing summits. We dive right into some of the new content marketing initiatives HyperX has released, hacks, to reach out to the casual gaming community. This includes new shows like Boss Bites, that's making Red Dead Redemption stew, Crash Course with Fusely doing haircuts while playing Animal Crossing, and the HyperX Showdown. We talked the HyperX truck, the HyperX Arena, and yes, even the full line of HyperX products. Later, we talk about improving accessibility to everyone, supporting charities and causes, distance learning, land centers, and much more. As Wendy says, we take a deep breath and keep grinding. Here's Wendy Lacotte. Last time I saw you was, I think, at Esports Bar. And, and you know, mm-hmm. I know one of the things that you do so much of is you travel a lot. You're, you know, you're a panelist in a lot of conferences. And you're yep. always out there. So what has happened for you? Are you still doing the same thing, but now just from that gaming chair with your backdrop? Yeah, can't, can't go anywhere. Although it occurred to me, trust me, I was going to be like, you know, going to uh, take the life in my hands and just go wherever because I right. wanted to get on a plane. But no, yeah, having great conversations, probably, you know, just just grinding. I mean, it's, you know, you can do a lot from this chair. So um, having a lot of good conversations, you know, some things have been super postponed and they just died. Right. You know, other things actually, you know, spurred interest. You know, we got some calls and they're kind of like, we're ready, you know. Right. And it's not just because of COVID, I think, just business priorities for people they're thinking about it i mean well yeah it is a bit COVID. i mean clearly if you can't do things in person those live events you know aren't going to happen so is there a lot more attention to the digital format for sure for sure um but they're good conversations i think they're just organic they're what people wanted to do and maybe kind of poked them a little bit and they got going a little sooner um i know that's kind of the case for us too um yeah, yeah, it's funny you say that because you guys, I mean, you're always doing stuff and, and I want to get into some of the cool, really cool things that you guys do. But I just got off the off a podcast with Wim Stocks earlier. He said yeah. the same thing. Yeah, about everything's accelerating. I thought about that two months ago when I started seeing all these pro traditional pro teams starting to say, what are we going to do? And they're starting to, you know, and the players as well, right? Just getting mm-hmm. involved in cause related events uh, okay. and try to, yeah, and, and, and everybody kind of saying, listen, there's nothing else to do. We need to do this now. <laughs> you know, so you, you guys were already doing stuff. So I could see where maybe some other things came to the, to the forefront. But, I mean, you're always, like, whether it's marketing at events or bringing in new influencers, you're always involved. So what, what do you think you guys have done that maybe moved to the top of the, the list that was maybe sitting at the middle of the list or lower, but now because of COVID kind of came up? Mm-hmm. We had really kind of – we had kicked – in our content marketing strategy um you know so we created some new shows on you know on our twitch channel we've been a little bit kind of just a little bit laid back about it we had a huge charity event with um ebay at the end of the year and um 
Gamers Outreach, um, which we all know the good work that they do. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, we've we've done things with our platform. We've hosted shows from the HyperX Esports Arena. So we have been doing that, but quite frankly, you know, we had a plan this year, and um, you know, we wanted to take our YouTube channel. We wanted to kind of reignite that. We've done some great work that everybody pretty much copied, I guess, in the industry, right. whether it was like the house, you know, the house tour format for teams and stuff like that. I mean, you know, we, it, it was, it, it's a good channel and it's big. Uh, and we just kind of have to feed the beast a little bit more with some new innovative type of um, things. Um, and then um, our Twitch channel. I mean, we just, um, you know, there's, we have plenty of talent that we can kind of bring into our universe of fans and community and share that with them. Uh, so that's now um, really kind of moved to the forefront. So content marketing, making shows. The other thing that really helped us is, um, you know, we're small but mighty internally we were able to produce a certain amount of stuff but as we really started to accelerate that and really kind of do more uh, we needed help with that so we reached out to green lake um you know which is an agency that is really good at production um you know they're a part of you know wrecked and rogue and um they're they're very very helpful um you know prior to uh, COVID, you know, we were definitely tapping into the production capability so that we were able to bring stuff to market, um, you know, sooner, faster. Um, and that's now really kicked in. So they help us with, um, you know, talent as well, rounding that talent up. Uh, and I think everybody's trying to, you know, kind of wrap their arms around, you know, those who are flexing their gaming skills, you know, that probably have different day jobs, you know, and, um, you know, bring them all on in and having fun and really using gaming as a way to kind of unite people. Um, you know, you can do it. I, I think our industry does it well. So, um, you know, I, I think it's just a matter of kind of embracing those folks that are saying, hey, you know, I do it. Like, how do, how do you really do that? You know, right. so and a lot of those inquiries, too. Well, uh, I, want know, to, I want to. Have a yeah, I want you to I want you to maybe run through a couple of those things that you do on the car content marketing side because I think some of the things you're doing instead of just talking about them in broad strokes, if you can drill down a little bit, they're super super cool. But as as you think about that for a second, I was on your LinkedIn page and you seem like I love how you say this. Your superpowers. First of all, you say you are not you're better at watching games than playing games, which I love because I think I am too, right? <laughs> but that, it doesn't mean you're not a gamer. If you love to watch, like I, I, I jump in with my kids, but I'm absolutely awful, but I play, uh, but I'm much better at watching, right? Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people are probably, that's probably true of people that watch tennis or golf, you know, it's, it, that could be very true. But then further down in your, in your bio that I'm, you probably typed, you said your superpowers our serious energy, resourcefulness, self-starter, creativity, and then the last three, I, or the last two are what I think we're going through right now, your agility and ready with a plan B. So it sounds like, you know, the end of that's the, your superpowers, which are part of who you are, um, almost kind of made you perfectly fit and ready for what we're going through now. And so let's kind of talk about the fact that you and HyperX have been able to do that and pivot some of that strategy and then talk about some of that content marketing you guys are doing, which is super cool. Yeah, um, yeah, I would say we're pretty, um, we've always been a pretty nimble organization. Um, we've got our kind of our ear to the street, if you will, to find out about, you know, trends that are happening and stuff like that. I'm personally, um, you know, that's, that's what I do uh, when I wake up in the morning. I'm a big trend watcher. Um, so, you know, as much as um, gaming is at our core and stuff, um, I'm, I'm watching a lot of other things, which you know, I could talk about eventually here, but it, it drives me and stuff. But as it pertains to kind of our plan B, um, yeah, let's let's talk about kind of what was a, a, a very big priority for us, which is to really engage more with our current audience, um, which are PC enthusiasts, but also a huge kind of business hack for us in 2020 is really to kind of take us and add those casual gamers, you know, into our community. And so it's really through content marketing and creating new storytelling um, that we're able to do that. So we've created uh, a number of new shows. Um, the we we kind of piloted a cooking show, if you will. Okay. Boss Bites. What's that called? Um, Boss Bites. 
Boss bites. I didn't know yeah. that. That's cool. We have one episode that we just kind of poked the bear with right. um, just to see what was happening. I mean, Red Dead Redemption, which I love um, graphically anyway, um, is, uh, you know, stew would be at the forefront of that. So we teach you how to make, you know, Red Dead Redemption stew. Okay. Uh, so we're, we're, you know, that's just, that's just one of them. And it was pretty experimental. Um, you know, we're, we're thinking about what the rest of that um, series should uh, take a look at, but we've gone in a little deeper with something. So this is kind of that plan B. We thought it could be very helpful at this time since the world is kind of taking on new skills to learn. And it's not just gaming, you know, they're tapping into, you know, whether it's learning how to do a haircut or, or something, right? So we came up with this series on YouTube, uh, and it's called Crash Course, HyperX Crash Course. So literally, they're kind of, you know, mini sessions for you to be able to learn how to do something. So we did use um, uh, our, our influencers, like Fusli, and she came out, and she has a roommate, and she thought that, you know, it'd be kind of cool to do Animal Crossing haircuts. So she taught you how to do that, you know, in between, you know, playing her, you know, her uh, keyboards and stuff like that. What she just does. I mean, this is her variety streaming that she does best. So she was being her authentic self and, you know, kind of throwing in a helpful tip or two. So we tapped into our base of influencers and, um, you know, found out, you know, did they have some other secret powers? Did they want to, you know, share some stuff about, you know, perhaps like Emulet, I think, um, who's with Dignitas, she, you know, said, you know, here's what I do for training. And so she, you know, says, I, I, I wake up and I do this, you know, first person shooter training, this aim training. So mm -hmm. she kind of takes you through aim training right. and um, just says, you know, this is a, you know, good exercise to go through. Uh, and then there's all other ones. I mean, there was another one who, who taught you, you know, like yoga uh, as well. So these were really well received, and I think right. they were vignette enough storytelling, you know, according to the talent and what was meaningful for them and stuff. And it's been working really well. I think we've had about four weeks of that now. Um, it'll it'll go on for a little bit longer. I was just looking. I think it's at least through July. Okay. And you know, we're not even. I don't even think we like to think start and end dates. You know, if something is working and it's providing value to our community we may continue that. And we're, sure. and I think that's our nimbleness, if you will. Yeah. So another one that we're doing is um, HyperX Showdown. Now this is a series that, this is a kind of a container, a show container, if you will, that we had, that we've established. Um, but now we are uh, going out and talking to professional athletes because really the phone is off the hook in terms of athletes that want to flex their gaming skills. You know, they just, they're, they're doing it. They need something to do and that's what they want to do. Mm -hmm. So we have a number of agencies coming to us and saying, you know, we have talent. Well, you know what? We have talent too. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're just saying, Hey, let's all play together. So we're putting together a show that's going to have some pretty um, terrific, uh, and they could have rookies that are there from the NBA. We've got some NFL talent, um, you know, and we've even decided, I think, in the first show to, you know, weave in some DJs uh, into it, too. Um, it just the demand is off the chart in terms of them wanting to connect based on their shared passion and love of gaming. Right. So that's what we're going to do. It's an eight um, week series. Um, to begin with, uh, that's going to launch on um, June 9th. Um, so that's been in the work. There's there's a lot of work to be done with that. But um, so where does that where does that does that show up on uh, do you guys on your, your on Twitch? The Twitch channel, Twitch. and you know we're you know we're there's other distribution talks in yep. the mix. You know we certainly you know there, there's a lot of opportunity. Let's say with the ESPNs of the world and stuff. So ESPN two two is the world. So. Um, no, we're in talks with you know a number of people like that. Okay. So, um, and are these guys is the is the is the platform are they are they competing against each other or like the cooking show was it was something different and yes yeah, that's a little different right and so one is about skills and teaching you a new skill so that's crash course the yep. cooking one was a little bit more teaching as well yeah. and then the other um, the other ones are going to be definitely challenges okay. you know they're game challenges for sure uh, and mixed with you know comedic relief and stuff right <laughs> right. Yeah.
for yeah. sure. Which is a talent, by the way. That's not the easiest thing. <laughs> you can get a couple gamers together, but you, you do want to have somebody moderating it, kind of making it fun and, right. and, and enjoyable. So is that we'll all part pros. of your... We'll have some, you know, obviously, we'll just have the professional talent and their skill is, you know, where it's at. Right. Um, but then we'll have some pros that we'll throw in there. And then each week, we'll probably feature a different game. You know, so there'll be different styles of games you know sure. whether it's a war zone for example could just be a Fortnite. it really kind of depends where you know our talent kind of veers and where they can be most entertaining right i mean right. we're gonna have fun with it but competitive with it too right and is that all part of your hyperx heroes or is hyperx heroes something separate that's is that your talent under your umbrella that you work with yeah you know we uh, the HyperX Heroes, okay, so a year ago, we formed um, really this initiative, which was called We're All Gamers. Yeah. And that was about, that was really kind of our start to pioneer that crossover of, you know, sports with gaming. We saw that, you know, sports fans indexed really high on their gaming behaviors, um, as well as music lovers. So we're kind of like, well, we can't do all of it at once. So let's pick a lane. Um, we had already, you know, formed relationships with, um, you know, we were the first really kind of pioneer relationship with, you know, an NFL talent, with, you know, NBA talent, Gordon Hayward, Juju Smith, Aaron Fox, you know, um, and, and also in the music area with Post Malone. So that formed kind of the start, if you will, of really kind of our aspirational talent behind the We're All Gamers campaign. Okay. But. Since then, so that that was a you know that was created great awareness um, in that uh, you know uh, you know sports world, um, and I would say in general kind of helped give really the industry a good leap forward into gaming as a lifestyle. Right. And you know yes, I mean it was wonderful for our brand in that space too, but I think it was really a statement for the industry as well. So um, from that. You know, we're all gamers. Good. I mean, great, because we are. And I think a lot of people are now, you know, nodding and understanding that the, the mainstreaming of gaming, you know, it, it's wonderful that the world is on board with that, right? I would say we, we're all excited about it. Um, but now, you know, it's not just, we don't want to just, you know, prevail and have, you know, aspirational gamers. We want to really celebrate, you know, the HyperX Heroes, the evolution of that is HyperX Heroes. So that's much more about that casual gaming, casual gamer that, that shares the love of gaming just a bit, you know, with, with less time on their hands, you know, maybe with less intensity, with less competitiveness, right. although gaming at its core is competitive and cha has challenges associated with it. And, um, you know, that's really where we kind of hit kind of influencers and um, kind of maybe second tier influencers because, you know, they're equally passionate about gaming. And we want to celebrate those. And we also want to celebrate those hometown heroes. So, you know, making, you know, those casual gamers, um, you know, progressively kind of going more youthful, right. celebrating those middle schoolers while well, celebrating, quite frankly, you know, um, elementary school kids, right? You know, and also those gamer parents that now have those children growing up, right? I mean, there's a whole other dynamic. And I think HyperX Heroes are, is about capturing, you know, that next gen, scouting that talent, if you will, you know, that um, will could move into something more pro, or maybe they're just going to go down, you know, a, a scholarship route, or, you know, Maybe they won't do that at all, but they'll move into the industry and have an occupation within, you know, maybe within right. marketing. Maybe they'll turn into, you know, a, a team lawyer or something, you know, player of rights. Who knows, right? right. So I think it's just more so, um, you know, the heroes is a little bit more of that, you know, I, I can be a, I am a hero. I can be a hero, um, you know, in um, those kind of gaming challenges that I do every day. Um, and I feel good about it. Um, yeah. And I think that, no, go ahead. You know, that kind of takes me to kind of a, another thing that feeling good, you know, as the world is covering gaming uh, a lot more and understanding it's mainstream and, you know, thank you COVID for bringing that to the forefront in a, in a big way. Right? right. I mean, it's a blessing really for, for, for us, um, provides a lot of positive conversation about it, but we, 
really identified that for us, the business hack and another business hack for us in 2020 is to stand for all good thing, things in gaming. Um, I think, a, a, you know, highlighting those positive forces is really important. So that hometown hero is definitely a point of light within, you know, um, uh, the gaming world. Um, you know, we're not always, you know, uh, you know, even if it's female gamers, if there's, you know, toxicity associated with their gameplay or whatever, that's not all that we're about. You know, there's a lot of good that comes from gaming. We're certainly seeing it now. And so we want to embrace and have a more positive, you know, story about gaming. Uh, and we seek that out. We seek that out in partnerships. We're seeking that out in our influencer relationships. We're seeking that out in the, you know, really kind of those professional athletes, you know, that that just have a love of gaming. Yeah. Um, and it's really seeping into everything that we're doing. We also got to go back to got to go back to our content. I veered a bit here. Yeah. No, but, that's um, good. That's we're good. Also, we're, we're also coming out with another um, show. Um, well, it's out. It's out. It's called Good Game. And so this is really kind of a format, a little bit of a news format that just tells you that does a roundup. Uh, and this is on our YouTube channel. And this is a roundup uh, about all good things that are happening as a result of kind of, you know, uh, response to isolation and uh, maybe first responders and the good work that they're doing right now uh, in the world. And so, um, yeah, we, you know, we've come up with a host, NARS, who's taking a look at this. Um, again, you know, Greenlit helping us with the production of that uh, and coming up with, you know, a weekly show to highlight those, you know, super positive forces during pandemic times. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's, and, and, you know, it's highlighting gaming companies doing good stuff, right? right. I mean, whether they've raised, you know, $250,000 for, you know, first responders and stuff, or whether it's, you know, a, a digital music thing that used, you know, gaming, um, you know, vir virtual music event that also had fundraising associated with it um, based on a gaming challenge or something. You know, um, we're highlighting those because it's so important for somebody to continue to tell that good story out in the world and to provide that positive coverage for gaming. Yeah, it's it's it really is necessary, and I love that that's happening. There's always so much, right? The sensationalism, and there's always so much bad news, negative news. I, I have this uh, issue uh, five days a week after seven thirty. My wife and I sit down, we play Jeopardy, and we have this whole Jeopardy thing. It's like it's one of our traditions. We have dinner with the family, and then we play Jeopardy. When Jeopardy's over, if I don't grab the remote control like immediately and switch the channel, I get hit instantly with the latest car crash or the latest gunfire incident or the, you know it's just this negativity and this bad news and and there's so much of that in the world we don't need more and more and more and more of that that doesn't need to jam down our throat so i love that you guys are doing that good game side of things and really focused on gaming and 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 you said something which kind of leads me right into what i was going to ask you next because you said something about fundraising as well and i saw just i think it was on your twitter your twitter you you it, i mean i'm sure you guys were involved in much more than this but stream aid which i think was maybe even a couple months ago as well as gamers versus covid how did you guys get involved with those and those seem both like amazing you know really incredible uh causes that you guys got behind yeah um you know we're getting a there, there's a lot of inquiry right now to support them you know we def a, a mechanism that is you know, often extremely helpful that we've learned over time is, you know, using our products to provide incentives to really boost that donation. You know, so we give, you know, accordingly. Um, and, and that's where they tend to be used. Our products is pricing. Uh, and so, again, a booster, if you will, to the donation. And so we kind of regularly get that call and um, we're responding to a lot more of those. Um, and, you know, but then we have core programs too. So while those are responding to the crisis and doing good, we also have core programs where we're very, um, you know, we're very open about the fact that we want, you know, um, you know, we want to improve accessibility for, you know, different um, groups within gaming. So let's take a look at, you know, gals and, you know, females in particular. You know, so we have kind of an ongoing relationship here with um, A Thousand Dreams, which is out of Washington, D.C., and they're providing, you know, scholarships and mentoring opportunities for gals that are looking, in particular, we, we focus on a particular area because of our HyperX Esports Arena, but we're trying to, you know, give gals opportunities in front of and behind the camera. 
Um, you know, so that could be in a streaming career, or it could even be, you know, managing a team that obviously ha has a presence, you know, uh, in, on, in an online presence or whatever. So, um, yeah, we, we have that at our core. We want to do good. And, um, you know, I talked about Gamers Outreach. You know, we've provided a lot of support. There's a long list of, you know, helpful things that we've done, um, you know, even down at the Boys and Girls Club. Um, you know, those are important areas, too, um, that are providing, you know, access. Um, and, you know, we just supported the LA Unified School District because now a new area is distance learning. Mm -hmm. you know, distance learning is huge. You know, think about, you know, a school district needing 130,000 headsets, you know, overnight. Right. We don't, that's, that's hard to have your plan B for that one, but right. I'm just saying. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's hard. So, but, um, you know, we're, we're doing what we can. We're grinding to, you know, really help, you know, all of those um, uh, folks. And then we also have relationships, too, with plan centers, PC cafes. They're doing remarkable things in local communities. So we're trying to support their efforts as mm -hmm. they decide, you know, to have, um, you know, really, uh, you know, strong community-based things to help underserved communities where they're using their facilities for access. And it just, it's, uh, you know, we take a deep breath. It's, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. So when you, so, I mean, you're out there all the time. You're, you're like one of the people for sure. That's the face of HyperX. Tons of people are meeting you. You're always like we talked about earlier on panels and conferences. If somebody is interested in, in working with you guys um, and, and trying to get you guys involved with their cause, do they reach out to you? Do you guys have a department like in traditional pro sports where I come from, there's a community outreach there's a, there's a whole staff there. There's three, four, five people that works just on that. Is, do you guys have somebody specifically in-house, or how do you handle those requests? You know, what we do is because, you know, if they're very gaming-focused, we do uh, bring them in through me. I take a look at them. Um, but then we do have a corporate social responsibility group, and we work very closely with them, and we do, you know, we do some due diligence on the organization. Um, so I work very closely with them if kind of they go past our first, you know, initial interest. Uh, and then from there we do proper vetting. I mean, we're going to check out a lot, you know, use of funds and we're going to get on, yeah, obviously, 501c3 and stuff like that. But, you know, we're, we're just, we're going to, we're going to utilize that. We, we need to do that because yeah. we are, we have, you know, corporate reporting that we do. Our parent company, Kingston, does corporate reporting and they want to understand the impact. You know, when we, you know, we're, when we lean in, um, the idea is to, you know, provide impact. So we do want to capture, we want to be measurable, we want to provide that, that impact. And um, yeah, so I mean, first stop is, is less, you know, if it's kind of a, a wider thing, like maybe even a big brothers, big sisters, I'm trying to think kind of what, what goes over. It could be that we could receive, you know, more so um, kind of a Kingston corporate support. Um, so that's, um, that's a possibility too. We kind of flesh it out internally, you know, okay. what, where we're going to go and stuff, but yeah. Sure. And you mentioned you, so you mentioned in, in this, I mean, I don't know if this is a number you just threw out there, if this was an actual request, but it kind of gets me into the product side of things. I wanted you to talk a little bit about the product side of things because you have so many amazing products and that's what the company, one of the things the company does is, is sell and, and have amazing products for people to wear, like you said. So you said 130,000 people because of COVID, like needing headsets. Now that was just, I, I don't know if that was the that's actual ask. Right. That's just high schoolers okay. in LA. So, Can you so, imagine? Uh, I mean, it's, it, well, it's incredible. And, and one of the organizations that I was just had a conversation with Ryan Johnson the other day, and I'm not sure if you know Ryan or not. Yeah. Uh, he's the founder of Community, and he was talking about the fact that, I think he said 9 million kids in this country are without like a laptop or internet. Yeah. We've and had so a conversation with him. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's doing so incredible stuff. And, you yeah. know, he is about access, right? You know, tech access. And that's important. That's really important. So we, we those are important initiatives. Yeah. So, yeah. So tell us a little bit just maybe about the, the newest headsets that have come out and then other ancillary products that you guys have in the line. Yeah. Um, we've got, you know, tent poles for us or product launches. Um, you know, you know, pandemic times or not. Our roadmap is rolling. Um, so, um, you know, we, we, we kind of saw some supply chain stuff coming in the January time frame just um, because of operations in China that we have. Um, but, 
you know, we were able to, I think, brace ourselves a little bit more, you know, change our um, demand forecasts and stuff. Um, you know, we're like everyone. I think we're still trying to keep up. I mean, there's just, you know, a, uh, you know, huge, huge demand, huge demand. You know, it doesn't really matter if you've got kind of a Best Buy that, you know, is only doing curbside pickup. That demand shifted somewhere else, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so, um, but we're coming out with, um, you know, headsets, um, you know, we've got a, um, you know, think of that casual gamer. We want to, you know, take our portfolio and, you know, pack a lot of value and uh, still be true to, you know, kind of the comfort and quality that we've delivered on our, on our um, headsets, um, but pack as much value as we can for, you know, new price points. Right. We want to if, if we, you know, believe that a casual gamer, you know, is, uh, um, you know, if we're, we're going after that casual gamer, clearly we want to have a solution that's affordable for them. Um, so we're doing that. We just came out, came out with um, Cloud Stinger, which um, uh, 7.1. So now we have surround sound on one of our kind of our kind of entry level product, if you will. Um, so things like that, you know, are top of mind for us. Um, another thing is, I mean, we, we do hold the position of the number one uh, best-selling PC gaming headset, and that's according to NPD. Okay. Um, so that's, you know, that's wonderful, but, you know, we'd also like to, um, you know, be recognized in the world for the terrific, you know, proprietary technology that we're bringing to our keyboards, um, you know, uh, mice. Uh, mouse pads, and then you know we recently came out with Quadcast, which is a microphone which is just flying off the shelves right now. Um, you know that's um, super popular with streamers, content creators, of course. Um, and so you'll start to continue to see innovations. We already have, um, you know, licensed product for you know, whether it's um, uh, you know Xbox and PlayStation Four. We do have those solutions, you know, but we'll continue to innovate in that area. One. Uh, I wish I had it in front of me. I, oh, it's downstairs, of course. But one product that we're coming out with, which is really great, you know, for your mobile phone um, when you're doing mobile gaming. And I did pick up PUBG Mobile during this time. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. I'm just I'm, I'm getting up there. You All know, right. I think uh, 17 out of 100. You know, right. kind of first try. So <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, yeah. I gotta improve here a good bit, but. Um, but it's um, basically a, a it's a really great product. Um, it's a charger uh, while you're mobile gaming. So it's a charger and it's kind of comfort grips. So it doesn't have controls in it. It's not trying to you know replicate your controls. You still have access to your phone for the controls and stuff. Um, but it's a it's a comfort thing and it's an unbelievable charger, which of course is the number one thing when you're you know that'll eat up your your um, your ability to gain is the battery life during mobile right. gaming. Right. So it's those types of helpful kind of kind of niche filling things for different segments of gamers. So if you're a console gamer, you know, um, we have a similar product, you know, if you're a Switch user, you know, so now mobile gaming. Um, so we're going to continue to innovate on that front. Um, you know, so we, we want to have, we want to be a household name when it comes to keyboards and um, mice. Um, and we just, we have some work to do there. So we continue to, you know, pump out, you know, from a marketing standpoint and from an innovation standpoint, a real notable thing that we did just May 12th. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but um, kind of broke the internet. Um, it was our collaboration with Ducky. Okay. So, you know, that's, you know, uh, uh, you know, a small format keyboard, so hard to see here, but right. oh, well, there, you there go. it is. There you go, yeah. Look gorgeous, yeah. but maybe you can't see that it's so many, but it is. It's 60%, 10 keyless. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, it was, um, we, we did a lot of um, demand creation for it, told people, you know, something unbelievable is coming, uh, and that was a really good, more than test and learn you know it was it was it was more than more than that but it was really well received on uh, by our community um you know we, we just don't have enough but kind of the purpose of a drop right i mean right. so right. so um but we're very encouraged by that um right. so community came out in a huge way embraced that and um yeah 
Yeah, that's awesome. It's so the it's great because any company, right? You, you either products or services, and you have these products that are fantastic products. But I was, I've been thinking about it, and and when you and I've met a number of times, and then I look at HyperX. To, HyperX to me, and and I don't know if the analogy fits or not, but it's almost like a, a lifestyle brand similar to me to like a Red Bull, where the brand has almost now become much bigger than the products itself. Like when you think of Red Bull, yeah, the, it's a drink, right? But they do all of these other things that are so, you know, cutting edge. And that's kind of when I when I think about you guys and I want to kind of, I want to jump into that that area too is you have these amazing products. That's how you started, but you've done these amazing campaigns with all these different athletes and entertainers and celebrities. But you also do these great brand activations and you have additional assets under the HyperX umbrella that assist with that, right? The HyperX, the HyperX truck. Can you talk about that? And obviously the arena has been, I, I believe it's probably been dark for the last month or two uh, yeah. because of what's been going on. But those are, those are incredible assets. They are. Um, you know, we, we have been on this journey of gaming lifestyle. And so we do seek to do collaborations and align our brand in that space. Um, you know, my, I have a personal obsession with the blurring of lines of brands. You know, I just think that's like, you know, huge trend that has is well underway. Um, and that crossover, you know, is something that we um, rather seek out and we thrive on. You know, so that's a large part, I would say, of the success. I mean, it could be, you know, a dead mouse you know, party, you know, um, that needs a, I mean, but it still has to be core and authentic to what we're about, which sure. obviously is an immersive, you know, audio experience, you know, so, um, you know, we connect on, on that front. On the other hand, our products are also super comfortable. So, you know, if you're gaming for six hours, you're going to be comfortable, but then, you know, why switch your headset, you know, just go into music mode, if you will. So we've been able to think through that, translate that into our products and come up with things like cloud mix, um, you know, that uh, that's good for, you know, music, music um, sessions as well as your gaming. And you never need to switch. That's kind of how we see the world, you know, moving forward. It's kind of one one blended thought, if you will. Um, with that in mind, um, how we how we do things with that is we then talk to, you know, Champion. Um, and, you know, since we wanted to come out with a clothing collaboration, um, there's been a lot of requests for that from our fan base. We're like, okay, um, Cloud Mix, we came out with a, a new colorway, and it was rose gold, which is pretty, you know, cool and, you know, pretty desirable. So um, we teamed up with, you know, we didn't just come up with, you know, some other, you know, kind of clothing, another hoodie and all that good stuff. We decided to take the expression of that colorway, the, the coolness of the rose gold of it, and really put that into, um, you know, uh, clothing um, that had marks on it that were rose gold. And it was blended with, clearly, uh, you know, it was a, a collab with Champion. So it's Champion C, you know, with uh, embroidered hyperx on it. It's just that taking it to that next level and obviously making it very exclusive and only available for a limited time. Um, then moving that along, being a little bit, you know, uh, kind of being true to our brand, if you will, and now making exclusive things available through Posty Fest. You know, so we think through those touch points um, and, you know, really just kind of express it a little differently than just coming up with a day in, day out HyperX shirt that you can buy. Right. Um, you know, so I think that's, um, you know, and so, um, you know, my position here at HyperX was, you know, came as a result of the industry um, really looking at, you know, non-endemic involvement and acknowledging that, you know, it, it can be bigger and it can be, um, you know, it can be an accelerator for, for businesses, you know, to growth areas of, of, um, uh, of brands, if you will. And so um, my position was born to basically have those conversations. And, you know, what I bring to that is, you know, I have deep knowledge having started digital agency here internally. And that's how I got connected really with HyperX brand. You know, we're not only under that umbrella of our internal digital agency, we served Kingston, which is a B2B brand, but then a B2C brand was obviously HyperX. 
So it's taking all that, you know, um, you know, traditional training, if you will, of digital marketing, the metrics by which brands, you know, measure their results and their impact um, and the growth that they need and how and the tactics that are approached. And now understanding that conversation. So as a gaming brand, being able to speak that language of that other brand is critical to saying, hey, let's hang out together. Let's see what we might be able to do. And then add a layer of creativity to it and figure out, is there innovation there? Can we bring new value? You know, but still achieve business objectives. So I think we have that business experience that we're bringing into those collaborations and not being too starry-eyed about kind of the, the kind of the, the glamour or the social value of it, which is there. And certainly the earned media that comes with that, that is, you know, um, will happen. But I think at the end of the day, we know that, you know, beverage companies, you know, um, there's a certain amount of branding, but, you know, they need consumptions and they need to translate that into conversions. You know, and I would say as a, as a maturing brand, you know, we seek, you know, that same path to, to, you know, engage our fan base and convert them and give them, you know, a great gaming experience at the end of the day. So, at the, you know, I think, um, you know, we share that same need to eventually get, you know, consumption of that which your, you know, your brand is about. Um, and through that, build your community, build your fan base and go back to them and, you know, have them show their, their fan love um, and continue to innovate. And have you, have you done anything? When was the last event that you did with, with the truck or, or, the, or the arena? And do you have anything on the schedule for the end of this year? Yeah, we, um, you know, uh, an area that we haven't talked about, but it's really core to our business is the, the um, developer relationships that we have. Okay. So, you know, we hang out with Blizzard a lot, you know, they're kind of down the street. <laughs> and, you know, when they, when they launched um, WoW Classic, um, you know, we had a huge day one event. And we've done, you know, a few day one events, but that one comes to mind. It was the most recent day one event um, to help launch WoW Classic live from the HyperX Esports Arena. Okay. So we had, you know, developers, you know, that were part of the panel of discussion. And we did our show, which is a talk show format and reveal, um, you know, certain aspects of it and what, what would all be coming. And then, you know, we were on at nine o'clock when it launched, you know, when everybody's trying to get on the servers. And stuff. Right. <laughs> exciting. I mean, it was really, you know, penting up that demand and it was super exciting. Uh, and that was um, that was very successful. Um, and um, what else have we done there? Um, mm, I think that was like this year. You okay. know, that, that okay. was this year. And yeah. that um, you know trucks. You know, in terms of our truck, uh, you know, we we brought that out to. Um, I think we we you know we brought that we had a lot of plans for it to go to a Comic Con and, right. and things like that and VidCon and all those things got pushed back. So you know, truck gets us into spots that are a little bit more lifestyle. So we like took the truck out to the Posty Fest, for example. So it kind of gets us into spots um, where you know gaming is a part of whatever else is being done. Super Bowl, the truck was at the Super Bowl right. um, as well. So. You know, um, it, it lends itself well to that environment. It's one truck. It's a big truck. You know, so you gotta gotta have the right space for it and stuff like that. But, well, you know, and the reason I asked about those two because I, I just know those are hard assets. But then you talked about digital, and and I just feel like this is a space that I don't know how much you've already done in it. But when you see the Marshmallow concert uh, through Fortnite, when you see Travis Scott on Fortnite. Um, and I saw, I think I saw just something maybe last week where there, I think it was MasterCard is maybe starting to do some in-game um, advertising through, well, I don't mm -hmm. remember which title it was. Is that an area that you think you guys will spend a bunch of time in? Because I could see it's, I mean, just through your caricatures of like Joel and Bean and everything where they have the headsets, I could see I'm wearing my headset and I'm watching and playing in the game. And then the people in the game are also wearing the headsets. I mean, is, is that something you've already done or doing? Or yeah. is that on the? Yeah, we've done that. We've done it in a few indie games, believe it or not. There's like a PC builder game that we've participated in. Real natural fit for us and stuff like that. But, um, you know, we just really started putting a resource on that to have a look at that. Um, so you, you probably will see more. We're entertaining that a lot more. Um, you know, we're. 
you know, it's just important where we place our brand. So right. we're getting a lot of guidance and stuff like that internally now kind of at the stage of the brand and stuff. But no, we're definitely interested in that. And I think on that point, um, you know, we're, we're getting a lot more um, inquiries about, um, you know, how there's like a store within store concept. So you yep. could have a Starbucks, you know, sitting in a Target or something like that, right? Yep. Well, you know, there's definitely, um, you know, much, you know, we, we know that Fortnite is a platform and that's why Travis Scott can appear there and do what he does or a marshmallow, right? Um, it's a platform. And so it's a media buy now for, you know, labels and musicians and things like that. It's very, very exciting and, you know, makes you wonder if you're a marketing person and you don't understand that as inventory. That's going to be very interesting moving forward because that's the skill set you're going to have to have. Right. You know, to really make, make that play be relevant for those brands that you're representing, whether you're at the agency level, whether you're at the label level. And I'm just talking about the music you know, sure. play that there was and stuff. Yeah. Um, but now we, we're starting to see that there's definitely, you know, of think, you know, other platform thinking, you know, kind of the store within the store. Um, and, you know, where we could have HyperX arenas, where we could have, you know, HyperX, um, areas um, you could have characters uh, and so those platforms are you know within within games you know within communities and stuff like that and that's that's interesting space that's property you know inventory if you will that that's new digital inventory for any brand to hang out in um, and I don't think that it's exclusive the, the exciting part of that it's not just exclusive to uh, to endemics, right, in the gaming space. Um, you know, I think the idea here is to have that be a very robust container to be able to pull in a number of brands, whether or not, you know, you know, you're trying to move cereal into, you know, hands of youth and stuff like that. So, uh, I mean, yeah, to, I mean, to your point, yeah, those are, those are things we're looking at, and we've done it on a small scale, let's say, in the indie world. Um, and um, but we are going to take a look at that. Well, I just think what you're in right now is such an exciting, I, I didn't realize, it's in a very exciting area. I didn't realize how important headsets were in gaming uh, because I, I hadn't gamed in a while, right? When I gamed, there were, you didn't really use headsets. When I originally started gaming and playing Pac-Man and Donkey Kong, and all, you didn't really need headsets. And when my kids started gaming, and, and they would tell me the difference without having a headset or even like just keeping, because I thought originally having loud music in the room while they were gaming was cool. But they're like, turn it down, turn it down. Because hearing what, you know, that your competitor is doing, hearing footsteps behind you or anything is, yeah, it's critical. And so it's such an exciting area that you're in. And I remember, this is probably a while ago when I was in the travel industry, but being at an art gallery and I didn't realize how much audio and, and listening and hearing how important it was. And I, I think the number was something extremely high, like 75 to 80% of our experience was, was auditory. And I was like, that can't be possible. And so what they did is they took you into this exhibition and basically you were like in a dark room and then there's this, this boat going across like through the Everglades and it's just a starry night with the moon and it's just going across and there's crickets and everything. And you're like, oh, it's beautiful. Well, all of a sudden mm -hmm. they put in, they put in that like Friday the 13th music underneath it. And all of a sudden it's like terrifying. You know, yeah, like, yeah, right. Yeah, it is. It just gets to your bones for sure. Right. For sure. So I mean, I mean there could also be there could also be um, kind of cool factor too. You know, sometimes in a console environment, you know, um, it's just a matter of I I need to wear a headset. Right. I, is it essential sometimes? But sometimes it is, absolutely is, right? Well, yeah. So it's, it's both. It's really both. And, um, yeah, I mean, we, we continue to kind of innovate on the headset front, and we do have, like, head tracking um, at the very high end of um, uh, one of our solutions called the Cloud Orbit S. So there's a head tracking feature, you know, so that if you fixate, you know, really kind of your – your, your vision over in a quarter um, and, and you move, the sound kind of moves with you and stuff. It's really right. incredible. I don't play the games that where it is, but I've just you know, obviously seen um, uh, examples of them and stuff, but it is immersive beyond immersive, you know, and it's, yeah. Um, yeah. 
So well, yeah, well, it, it makes the experience just so much more incredible, more fun. I, I just, I had a conversation with Kevin Wasilewski the other day from Origin PC, and we were talking about, you know, the difference between high def today and, and the number of pixels and the resolution in screens and what you can see today. And, 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 I, and I showed my kids because the pandemic started, right? They don't have any traditional pro sports on now. So I threw an old sporting event out from like 1980 or 1985. The difference in the quality of the picture was like crazy. It was ridiculous, mm -hmm. and 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 I probably don't notice it, but I believe probably sound has gone the same direction, right? If I used headsets from back in the '70s and '80s, it probably was muffled or you know not really crystal clear, and and now there's been this progression, and and now the headsets that we have are just so much better. Like you said, being able to look one way and the sound moves with you, that's just it's Very incredible. Much so. Right, yeah. very much so. The drivers, the sound drivers, you know, and the precision. Uh, and accuracy of those is definitely increasing in our product team and our development team. Um, you know, they're, they're on it. Um, and they're working with, you know, um, people, well, technology, if you will. The Orbit S is using, you know, wave, uh, wave technology. And it's not, I believe in that case, it's not necessarily our own, but we found ways to incorporate that within our products. So we're definitely looking at that. That's not to say that, you know, we, know that we wouldn't seek to innovate on top of that as well right so we're very much in tune with that but at the same time you know we you know we have a good better best as part of our roadmap right. and we always want to keep that so we want to find ways to bring that goodness down to um to those who can afford it and i think that's the hard work you know really of our product teams is to figure out how to you know pack that tremendous value into it well it's pretty excellent right now and you get a great experience you know bringing 7.1 surround sound down to you know stinger you know at you know a stinger product is you know can be a certain version of it can be 39.99 that's unbelievable you know i mean for just a little bit it's not 39.99 with 7.1 but still you know so um i think we're also really you know our, our product team is very in tune with that uh, and wants to bring, you know, uh, that, that great experience um, as, you know, to the to the mainstream to as much as possible. Well, all the stuff you guys are doing is cutting edge and is trailblazing. I, I, is there anything, you know, we've talked about a bunch of stuff, but is there anything that, that you've got yeah. coming up that we didn't talk about yet that maybe you wanted well, to touch about? Well, just a couple of things, you know, yeah. just, um, you know, I was talking about that journey going down, you um, you know, where we really had pioneered that crossover between athletes, you know, this is kind of that year of kind of crossing over into the world of music. Um, we've partnered with Hit Command, which is a company that is at the forefront of digital marketing events. Um, you know, I, I believe physical events a, as well, but obviously moving far more into digital music events. And so, you know, they're, um, and as well as, you know, directly with um, labels and, you know, the talent that they represent. So there's, you know, tremendous interest. Um, it's very exciting. There's a lot of growth in being able to do that. And certainly, you know, eventful things like, you know, the, the Travis play is is helpful, right? right. <laughs> it's definitely yeah. helpful. And so, um, you know, we're really trying to, you know, uh, kind of pave the way similarly to what we did um, with pioneering kind of sports, you know, with all of that music talent. Right. You know, and bring them on into the world of gaming and find immersive ways for them to, you know, um, you know, capture kind of that the audio quality and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, we will continue to kind of kind of poke, poke away at that through, you know, hit command, you know, leading our hand into areas because we have a strategic relationship with them. So you'll start to see our products and more of their event activations. Uh, and then, you know, through that, you know, if there's, you know, individual and, you know, personalities that want to do more, um, you know, we can have relationships with those much like, let's say, a Post Malone relationship right. that we have and right. stuff. So I would say that's that's top of mind. That's something that, you know, where we um, take a look at. And then, you know, um, just on the general front of, you know, partnerships, collaborations, we are you know, very much, you know, looking at collaborations. We take a look at all dimensions of kind of all, all different industries on, um, you know, that's kind of that, that blurring of lines, whether it's, you know, fashion, streetwear, shoes, auto, you, I mean, you name it, right? Interior design and things like that. So, 
you know, a lot of discussions there to find out what would be appropriate. It's not our goal to do a ton of these. You know, it's very drop kind of um, thought, if you will. You know, where it's special, exclusive, and things like that. Um, we did this with a Juju uh, Smith sister product. Um, we made a custom headset for him. You know, he was able to um, autograph those um, and, you know, exclusively sell the very few units that we created. You know, so where it makes sense, you know, we'll create that special something, right, you know, for, for a fan base and stuff. And I think, you know, we increasingly want to figure out ways to be helpful to non-endemics as they look to gamer audiences, you know, as a, as a growth strategy. You know, we definitely have a legacy in it. Um, so um, we're, we're pretty certain we could be helpful in that regard, but, you know, it's not just a matter of sharing, you know, really kind of our audiences and stuff like that, you know, as people, I mean, it, it's, it's important and obviously that's the way that, you know, there's, there can be synergies and stuff, but we want to create, we want to innovate, you know, brands have innovation labs, right. you know, so so let's hang out together and figure out what can we innovate and what, you know, can ha capture the hearts and minds of gamers maybe that they don't already have, you know, well, kind of looking yeah. at our distinct competencies. I, I love that because that's one of the content play, especially it sounds like you guys are doing that. And that's one of the things I've been talking to a number of people recently and, and we talk about, you know, just doing it. So you can talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, but sometimes you, have, you just do it. And so yeah. you don't know if the cooking show is going to work, right? But let's just do it. And then if it works, mm -hmm. we'll do it again. And who knows, we might do it a, a once a week or once a month or we might, you know, do it into perpetuity. We don't know right. when we'll stop, right? So if, I, if, yeah, go ahead. But I would say also kind of on the physical product front too, um, you know, so figure it could be, you know, product services, that type of a thing, even beyond just kind of our content and storytelling, although that can be, those can be places where obviously that is announced. Right. Um, you know, so I think that's, um, I think that's, you know, an area to take a look at. Um, uh, I forgot what I was going to say about that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> other than, no, other than, you know, it's, it's really, um, um, I, I think the, you know, gamers appreciate really kind of those new blurring of lines and stuff. And I think it's up, it's kind of up to us to kind of test those out, test and learn. And I think to your point of not being fearful of doing that and going for it and whatever, um, I think there's a lot of room for, for test and learn. And those would be the best type of, you know, partnerships that we could have where we actually, you know, can jump on in, give something a go, um, you know, not be too hesitant, but thoughtful about it, obviously. Uh, and then over time, really kind of build this trusted, you know, partnership and come out with even that much more. Um, so we, we do believe in, in going for it. I mean, this is the way you get your data. This is the way you learn. This is the way you hear and listen, you know, to your fan base. We've always been of that. We have, you know, pretty big infrastructure to be able to get that feedback right away, good or bad. You know, we, we, um, we, we can hear it and we can capture it. And so we listen really, really well to our fan base. Where do you, th where would be the best as, as we kind of close up, where's the best place for us to continue to follow what's going on? Because again, we talked about it. You guys are doing a lot right now. There's a, it's very exciting. So should I go to YouTube? Should I go to Twitch? Is it HyperX? Is it a HyperX channel? Should I go to your website? Where's the best, where are the best places to follow you guys? You know, HyperX, um, you know, HyperXGaming.com is going to be where you're going to see a lot to do with, you know, details on our products, of course. Um, you'll get a little bit more storytelling there with some of our, um, you know, ambassadors and heroes and things like that. Um, but then for sure, you know, Twitter is where we break a lot of um, our news on about maybe some new products and things like that. You know, you'll get, um, you know, some great entertainment, obviously, with um, YouTube and those shows that I talked about. Um, Twitch um, can also be um, reveals on uh, in terms of products, but also um, very talented and very entertaining. And then, you know, we're on Snap, we're on TikTok, and, you know, we're doing different things depending on the platform, right? Um, but they're always, you know, uh, getting you uh, involved in the brand and, you know, whatever our um, cultural moments are that we're celebrating at the time. Yeah. So for sure, you want to check all of those out. 
Yeah, that TikTok is now taking off recently, and then you, Instagram, Facebook, and you've got all the. I mean, it's just. I'm amazed. I'm always amazed, and in my in my in my kids are using stuff that's completely different than that. They're actually yeah. doing a lot more straight through the games themselves and through the consoles themselves. You know, they yep. don't even Discord that for yeah. sure. Discord. Yep. Yeah. 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 I mean, and, and you'll find us too. I mean, you know, wherever we have on, um, you know, sponsorship routes and things like that, you know, we're doing things with Facebook gaming and things like that. So, I mean, you, you do kind of see us in, in a number of I'd like to thank Wendy for sharing her time, experience, and knowledge with us today. I always really enjoy talking to her because of both her vast knowledge of gaming and esports and all the cool things she is working on with HyperX. Their innovative projects, influencer partnerships, one-of-a-kind assets, and so much more. You can listen again, but you can also find timestamp segments of the show, links to Wendy's social pages, and more information about her company, projects, and media in the show notes. If you enjoyed our discussion, please let us know. Continue the conversation with me across all social platforms and become a part of the Ultimate Gamer community today by subscribing at ultimategamer.com. We release a new show every day of the week, Monday through Friday, so be the first to join us for some outstanding upcoming guests and or dive back into the library of previous Level Up pods to hear from some of the most brilliant minds in the space. Experts like co-owner and CCO of AOE Creative, Markel Lee, CEO of Skillshot Media, Todd Harris, and VP of Gaming at the Switch, Charles Conroy, just to name a few. You can find all these episodes and more on the Ultimate Gamer website, on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your pods. And finally, please like, rate, and review the show. It helps us reach the gaming community to spread the word and share the wisdom of our guests, as well as some of the most thought-provoking stories in the industry. Shout out, as always, to the Ultimate Gamer. I look forward to being with you on the next Level Up Podcast.